Preface and Introduction to the Acarnians. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. The Acarnians by Aristophanes. Translated by Charles James Bilson, 1858 to 1932. Translator's Preface and Introduction Preface In the following translation, I have attempted to present the Acarnians to English readers in the spirit of a lively acting play. With this aim in view, I have rendered the dialogue throughout in the free rhyming meter of modern burlesque, which does not even shrink upon occasion from a bad rhyme. It has been the usual practice of translators to represent the Greek iambic meter in English by blank verse, and there is certainly no finer mode of expressing the ordered march of the tragic rhythm. But for the less restrained comic iambic, the loose unrhymed verse generally adopted seems but a poor substitute, giving no adequate compensation for the lost point and emphasis of the original. This point and emphasis I have endeavored with scant success to preserve english readers must not of course take this version to be even in attempt aristophanic the soul of aristophanes dwelleth not in a dry place and his audacious bacchic license is out of date in the cool shades of modern protestantism some passages in this play have been thus necessarily omitted and others for example the phallic hymn have been as the only alternative to their omission hopelessly modernized the notes are purely explanatory and illustrative and do not touch upon any points of scholarship introduction the oldest comedy that has come down to modern times is that which aristophanes produced at athens in the spring of the year b c four twenty five it has moreover the less fictitious interest of being one of the best plays that were ever written. The Acarnians was a bold but good-natured attack upon the Athenian Jingos, who combined a bitter hatred of Sparta with an intense desire for the aggrandizement of imperial Athens. The critical instinct of great satirists usually inclines them to side with the minority. But Aristophanes had strong and solid reasons for his view of the situation which might have convinced the most practical statesmen. The Peloponnesian War had lasted five years, and the Athenians, reduced by the ravages of their enemies, and still more by the terrible visitation of the plague, had shown an elasticity under sufferings almost unparalleled in history. Their pride, so far from falling with their fortunes, rose higher at every reverse, and shrank from making overtures of peace to the exulting Spartan. This sanguine buoyancy of disposition prepared those who knew Athens best for the astounding levity which afterwards marked her conduct. But while there were many who saw no hope for their fellow countrymen, if they strayed too far from the old and well-tried paths, and who distrusted their airy visions and perpetual childish longing for some new thing, yet these were for the most part, like poor relenting Nicaeus, unable to stem the tide of popular enthusiasm, and either turned it to their personal advantage or were swept away to their destruction. Aristophanes, however, under the mask of comedy, did not hesitate to oppose with all his powers of ridicule and invective the fatal delusion of the people. It is in this play that he first speaks out boldly in favor of peace, and the apologetic though firm tone which he assumes shows the risk which he ran. His apprehensions were not realized, for the volatile Athenians, always ready to enjoy a joke at their own expense, only laughed good-humoredly and gave him the first prize. They were content to kiss the rod without profiting by its correction. The Acarnians are well chosen to represent the most bitter zealots of the war. Their fertile and populous suburb which lay about eight miles from Athens, was desolated year after year by the invasions of Sparta, and their military character is evidenced by the fact that at the commencement of the war they furnished a tenth of the whole regular infantry. The scene of the play is laid on the Pnyx, 
the meeting-place of the ecclesia or public assembly of the citizens the pnyx lay to the west of the areopagus on a slope connected with mount lycabetus a semicircular space with an area of about twelve thousand square yards was marked out upon the side of the hill and levelled by means of large stones built up to a sufficient height from the lower ground here stood the bima a platform cut out of the solid rock from which the attic orators spoke in full view of the parthenon and all the eloquent monuments of athenian greatness the public assemblies which met upon the pnyx were summoned and presided over by the members of the senate of five hundred who were called prytanes and one of whose number was appointed chairman every day in the week at the opening of the play dikaiopolis whose name means good citizen the hero of the piece who represents throughout the views of aristophanes is discovered sitting in the pnyx and waiting for the citizens to assemble he is very much disgusted with his lot and casting up his accounts shows that the pleasures and pains are very unfairly balanced item to seeing cleon the notorious demagogue prosecuted one pure poetic pleasure item to hearing theognis instead of aeschylus in the theatre one tragical disappointment etc the times are altogether out of joint and he resolves to set them right by a policy of obstruction just as he arrives at this determination the light-hearted crowd of athenian citizens come pouring in like troutlets in a stream to deliberate upon affairs of state the herald makes proclamation who wishes to harangue whereupon an insignificant little personage gets on his legs and declares that he has a special mission from the gods to make a peace upon which he is promptly removed by the police the assembly then listens to the traveller's tales of some ambassadors who excite the wrath of dikaiopolis and he sends amphitheus to sparta to make a private peace for himself and his family his messenger soon returns running violently for he is being pursued and stoned by some old acarnian fire-eaters who will have nothing to do with pieces however he has brought dikaiopolis three samples of truces from which that worthy selects one for thirty years and retires to his house to celebrate the feast of bacchus after he has marched in solemn procession round the stage with his daughter and maid-servant he is set upon by the chorus of old acarnians with whom he has to endeavour to justify himself for concluding the peace he contends that the spartans are not so black as they are painted and when this argument only enrages his hearers the more has resource to a stratagem and so obtains leave to make them a speech upon the subject with his head upon a chopping-block but first he deems it prudent to borrow an appropriate tragedy costume from euripides the new-fangled poet of common life having obtained this he comes out and speaks for his life with such effect that he wins over to his cause one half of the chorus the other half however still clamour for war and call in lamachus the great general when that hero appears upon the scene he immediately becomes a butt for the ridicule of dikaiopolis who abuses him soundly first for his military appearance and spirit and then as representative of those young ambassadors who through favouritism were continually being sent off to thrace and sicily and all kinds of ridiculous places doing no work but drawing a high salary tried veterans like these old acarnians he complains never gets these sinecures upon hearing this lamachus expresses his resolution of waging war with sparta to the death and dikaiopolis proclaims that he is about to open a market for the use of the lacedaemonians and their allies and the megarians and boeotians in fact for the use of all the world except lamachus here follows the parabasis in which the poet through the mouth of the chorus answers the charge of libelling the state which had been brought against him after an invocation to the muse in lyric verse the chorus goes on to complain of the ingratitude shown by the state to her old servants and of the scandalous way in which they are browbeaten in the law course by ready-tongued and profligate young barristers meantime the news of dikaiopolis's open market has travelled far 
and the first person to arrive is a megarian accompanied by two little daughters the athenian marketplace from which they were excluded by a special decree is a delightful spot to men of his country however he is so poor that he has nothing to sell or exchange until the expedient suggests itself to him of selling his two daughters in sacks as little pigs he thus disposes of them to dicaeopolis for some salt and garlic and thanks to dicaeopolis's cat and nine tails escapes from an intrusive informer the chorus now sings some verses congratulating dicaeopolis upon the success of his piece the next person who comes to market is a boeotian who arrives accompanied by a boy laden with all kinds of game and surrounded by a crowd of pipers playing national airs when he has driven out these nuisances dicaeopolis asks the boeotian what he has brought to market and the newcomer in striking contrast with the starved megarian enumerates beasts birds and dainties of every description dicaeopolis agrees to purchase the whole pack in exchange for that athenian specialty a sycophant or informer one of those well-abused officials whose duty it was to inform against the importation of contraband goods at this moment nicarchus enters and proceeds to denounce the boeotian for bringing into the city a wick which as he gravely explains might be used for burning down the dockyard however he is promptly seized bound hand and foot packed up in straw like so much crockery and carried off under the boeotian's arm the chorus chant a panegyric upon dicaeopolis and express their hatred of war in an ode to peace or reconciliation and now the herald comes forth to announce the feast of pitchers in which a skin of wine is given to the most successful tippler dicaeopolis is very busy preparing for the banquet and refuses everybody a share of his peace except a bride who wants to keep her newly married husband from the war lamachus is ordered out to keep the passes in the snow and dicaeopolis receives an invitation to dinner and the preparations of the two for feasting and fighting are absurdly contrasted when lamachus is departed to keep guard and dicaeopolis to make merry the chorus take occasion to abuse antimachus who had offended their master and express a wish that two humorous disasters will befall him and now we have reached the closing scene the warrior and the peacemaker return the former wounded and miserable the latter amorous drunk and happy for has he not been triumphant over all rivals and won the drinker's prize so the play ends lamachus limping off to the doctors while dicaeopolis is borne away on the shoulders of his companions in joyful procession end of preface and introduction recording by expatriate in bangor maine part one of the acarnians by aristophanes translated by charles james bilson eighteen fifty eight to nineteen thirty two this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine part one scene the pneeks at athens dicaeopolis alone there really is no end to my vexations my pleasures are too scanty for my patience i've only had some four that i could swear to while plagued with all the ills that flesh is heir to when had i now a pure poetic pleasure ah yes i know what charmed me beyond measure to see base cleon by that lawsuit shaken disgorging the five talents he had taken that made me radiant the knights be blessed they find the sinner and the land had rest but then i've had a tragical disaster when i sat yawning waiting for the master and the man bellowed out lead on the chorus theognus fancy what a shock passed o'er us see how dexiphius pleased me who just now sang the boothian and bore off the cow but i had this year a paralytic seizure when slouching charis played the stately measure then never since my mother washed me first was the dust smarting in my eyes so cursed as now when the assemblies do this minute and there's the paniques without a creature in it they're chattering in the market-place and flying in all directions from the scarlet dying 
the very prittanies aren't here they'll rush in at the eleventh hour pushing and crushing to get at the best seats like streams they roll on for peace they never care oh town of solon i'm always very first on these occasions and take my seat alone and try my patience and groan and gape and don't know what to do pluck out stray hairs and do a sum or two then gazing on the fields for peace i yearn hating the town and longing to return to my own deem which never thought of crying buy coals buy vinegar nor dreamt of buying that's by play to your independent peasant and so to tell the truth i'm here at present to shout and jeer and interrupt the speaking unless it's peace and nothing else they're seeking enter prytanes herald and phytheus and citizens here come the prytanes at midday too scrambling for places as i said they do herald come forth come forth within the ground that's consecrate and phytheus has any speech been made herald who wants to orate Amphitheus, I do. Herald, who are you? Amphitheus, Amphitheus. Herald, not a human? Amphitheus, no, an immortal, though my ma's a woman. Thus, pompously, burlesquing the genealogical prologues of Euripides. I, whom mortals call Amphitheus, sprang from Demeter and Triptolemus, for they had issues Seleus, and he espoused my grandmother Phanerity. Her son Licinus was my honoured father, whence my immortal lineage you'll gather. The gods have given me a special charter to go alone and make a peace with Sparta. But, though my godlike nature no pretense is, I cannot pay my travelling expenses. The Prytanes don't give. Herald what ho the bowmen the bowmen or constables enter and remove the obstructionist amphitheus as he is being dragged out triptolemus defend me from my foemen dicaeopolis o prytanes you do abuse the ecclesia ousting the man who wants to make us easier to get us peace and hang up every buckler herald be silent there dicaeopolis i'll not be such a truckler not till i hear a motion about peace herald the persian embassy returned to greece dicaeopolis persian indeed ambassadors are odious i hate the peacocks and the way they toady us enter the ambassadors from persia fantastically arrayed in oriental costume herald silence there dicaeopolis phew ecbatana what guys chief ambassador you sent us you'll remember to advise with the great king upon affairs of weight euthymenes then filled our chair of state two drachmas each per diem were our wages dicaeopolis oh those poor drachmas ambassador well we toiled for ages o'er the keister's plain camping or creeping in chairs with nothing to be done but sleeping twas pitiful dicaeopolis and i deserved no pity when i lay out on straw to guard the city ambassador and then they feasted us and would insist all that we should drink from cups of gold and crystal their strong sweet wine dicaeopolis men of the city rocky don't you perceive how all these envoys mock ye ambassador for men are not men to barbarian thinking unless they're great at eating and at drinking dicaeopolis no nor to ours unless they've scaped the gallows ambassador in the fourth year we came to the king's palace but he was absent on an expedition with all his army and his court physician eight months upon the golden mountain seated he kept an easement dicaeopolis when had he completed his labours ambassador he arose and marching down at full of moon returned into the town and feasted us and set before us oxen all roasted whole in ovens dicaeopolis now a pox on the braggart fancy cooking such a fable ambassador ay and by jove a bird came on the table three times as big as as cleonymus yonder points to a very stout gentleman among the audience a kind of gull it was dicaeopolis ah then no wonder you gulled us drawing that high salary ambassador 
and now we brought with us the great king's eye sudartibus dicaeopolis i wish a crowd fly down my fine ambassador and peck your own herald the great king's eye enter sudartibus a mask representing one prodigious eye attended by eunuchs dicaeopolis great heracles astounding you're looking broadsides man pray are you rounding a headland into dock till calmer weather why round your eye you've got a rowlock leather ambassador come now sudartibus to all discover why the great king of persia sent you over sudartibus beginny shippy bungo pitchin hollow ambassador gee understand em dicaeopolis no i don't quite follow ambassador he says the king will send us gold at once to sudartibus come now say gold again more plain you dunce sudartibus no getty gold you black leggy iones dicaeopolis oh dear oh dear how very plain his tone is ambassador he says dicaeopolis we're open to his coarse assertions if we expect to get gold from the persians ambassador no we'll get gold in nuggets that's the sense dicaeopolis pshaw nuggets you've a pretty impudence stand off and i will test him if i can to sudartibus you sir please tell me tell this gentleman he holds out his fist briefly and clearly what i wish you to and if you don't i'll dye you black and blue now will the great king send us any gold sudartibus and the eunuchs make the greek sign of negation the envoys then have cozened us we are sold sudartibus and the eunuchs make the greek sign of assent they nodded greek tis plain they come from hellas ah but i know now one of those two fellows it's cleisthenes sabartius's baby why do you come to us like this you gaby why don't you shave your beard you grinning monkey before you personate a persian flunkey herald silence be seated the senators invite the eye to dinner in the town hall dicaeopolis as i'm a living sinner this is the very gallows here i'm puzzling while the doors never shut against their guzzling but i will do a deed of might and glory where's my amphitheus amphitheus entering on the instant he stands before ye dicaeopolis here take me these eight drachmas then and sign a truce with sparta for myself and mine for my good woman and the little bodies exit amphitheus to the prytanes keep up your embassies you gaping noddies herald enter theorus from Sitalkes. enter theorus theorus hello dicaeopolis another traveller's tale for us to swallow theorus we should not have remained in thrace such ages dicaeopolis not if you hadn't had such handsome wages theorus but the streams froze and all the land lay under a canopy of snow dicaeopolis why yes no wonder theognis play was freezing hard just then theorus well all this time i stayed there gentlemen drinking with prince Sitalkes. There is a frantic athenomaniac for you, so romantic in his devotion to you that he'd cover the walls with scribbling like a crazy lover. From the east to western sea, Athens is the fairest she. And then his son, whom we had dubbed Athenian, desired to taste, being very weak and leany, an Ionian sausage from the revels, suing his father to assist the land they grew in his father swore with many a libation he'd send the biggest army in the nation and make athenians cry with hands uplifted why what a lot of locusts hither drifted dicaeopolis may i be hanged if we're not hocus pocus by all you say except that one word locust theorus and now he sends you which i'm sure must charm ye the false and valiant odomantian army dicaeopolis oh yes they've come to eat our victuals for us herald enter the thracians brought us by theorus enter the thracians a troop of wretched tatterdemalions dicaeopolis pray what atrocities are these theorus the host of odomantians at a trifling cost two drachmas each they'll desolate with ravages boeotia dicaeopolis what 
two drachmas for those savages you'd have some grumbling from our gallant seamen the city's bulwark oh my evil demon it's me they're ravaging my garlic's gone to the thracians put down my garlic theorus stop you simpleton they're garlic valiant now don't go too near dicaeopolis you prytanes do you see me pillaged here in my own country and by foreign losels but i forbid a meeting for proposals about the thracians pay tis most profane the gods declare i felt a drop of rain herald thracians depart and two days hence return now citizens the meeting will adjourn exeunt prytanes thracians theorus herald and citizens dicaeopolis oh what a salad's wasted on that tartar but here's amphitheus come back from sparta welcome amphitheus enter amphitheus running amphitheus not till i stop running for i must baffle these acarnians cunning dicaeopolis why what's the matter amphitheus i was hurrying here with truces when some old acarnians near got scent of them tough hearts of oak and maple old heroes of the marathonian staple and they all bawled and bellowed stop you loun do you bring truces with our vines cut down then while they filled with stones the cloaks they wore i ran away and they pursued and swore dicaeopolis well let them swear but you have brought the truces amphitheus ay that i have three different sample juices produces three wine jars from under his cloak here's one for five years come take that and try it dicaeopolis bah after putting the jar to his lips makes a wry face amphitheus well dicaeopolis what nasty stuff i'll never buy it it smells of pitch and rigging out new galleys amphitheus then try this ten-year piece dicaeopolis tasting it it smells of malice and shilly-shallying among the allies and has a powerful stink of embassies amphitheus but here's a truce for you by sea and land for thirty years dicaeopolis taking a long pull by jupiter that's grand the genuine smack of nectar and ambrosia most excellent good it couldn't make things cosier it isn't to get ready three days rations but cries out loud pursue your inclinations i'll pour libations out and drain it dry and with these old acarnians good-bye i go to keep the country feast of bacchus freed from the wars and miseries that rack us exit dicaeopolis amphitheus and i'll go too lest these acarnians track us exit amphitheus enter the chorus of old acarnians running chorus follow this way all together ask of every one you meet if he's seen the rascal running with his truces down the street for our city's name and honour we must hunt the fellow down tell me where's the scoundrel hiding who brings truces to the town he's escaped he's escaped he has bolted and fled oh my feeble old joints for the years that are sped when i ran with a coal scuttle tied on my back and was pressing phylus himself all the track ah had i but hunted this peace-bearer then he'd never have fled with such ease to his den now my limbs are growing weaker old lacratides is sore with a stiffness in the haunches that he never felt of yore so he's gone but we must chase him never let him laugh and jeer at escaping from acarnians though their limbs are old and queer father zeus gods above he is treated with those whom i hate and detest as my bitterest foes growing fiercer and fiercer our war never drops until i'm revenged for the loss of my crops till painful and sharp to the heart of their lines like a bulrush i pierce in defence of my vines but we must pursue and chase him seek him all the wide world o'er looking to the plain of peltai tracking him from shore to shore till at length we find the rascal for i shall not rest content till at once my pelting gives him death and grave and monument enter dicaeopolis with his wife daughter and maid-servant dicaeopolis speak no word of evil omen chorus hush you hear his prayer for silence he's the very man i say come to sacrifice i take it let us keep out of the way the chorus retire dicaeopolis speak no word of evil omen now basket girl step forward once or twice wife 
put down the basket child let's sacrifice daughter please mother may i have the spoon to take the porridge out and pour it on this cake dikaiopolis now all is well o bacchanalian king accept with joy the offerings i bring accept my little family procession and keep me free from service and oppression that i may keep thy feast and live in clover until my thirty years of peace are over wife come bear the basket prettily my pretty with a proper sunday face don't let em loot ye of all your gold and jewels in the scrimmage dikaiopolis now xanthius lift up the phallic image i'll follow with the hymn you wife must now stop to make an audience for us on the housetop exit wife dikaiopolis his daughter and maidservant march in solemn procession round the stage while dikaiopolis sings the phallic hymn the hymn hail phalles frolic maid of bacchus whose wandering crews so oft attack us with many a drunken midnight fracas and theft clandestine thou half undoest the ills that rack us with mirth and jesting for five long years i've had hard measure and now come home with heartfelt pleasure to taste this truce the dearest treasure to us poor haymakers no general war shall mar my leisure nor general lamachus tis sweeter far than warlike glory to find your lassie dear before ye roaming mid phileus olives hoary in still recesses and tell her all your tender story with sweet caresses o phales drunken rattling fellow when evening cups have made you mellow rose drops of peace shall chase the yellow from morning peepers your shield will hang where sparkles tell a home fireside keepers the chorus rush forward upon dikaiopolis chorus that's a fellow that's the man pelt him pelt him pelt him there beat the blackguard now you can would you spare would you spare dikaiopolis who leaving his head unguarded devotes all his care to the preservation of his sacrificial jar heracles what is the matter oh you'll break my little jar chorus oh we'll break your headpiece for you dirty scoundrel that you are dikaiopolis nay but tell me what my crime is reverend acarnian band chorus you ask that you wretch you villain traitor to your fatherland you who made a private truce and now can look us in the face dikaiopolis but you don't know why i made it listen and i'll state my case chorus listen to your lies and quibbles wretch we'll bury you with stones dikaiopolis nay but not until you've heard me wait till then to break my bones chorus i'll not wait don't you prate any longer for i hate you greater scamp than cleon rate you whom to shoe soles i shall pair for the gallant knights to wear i won't hear you i won't listen while you make a long oration you have made a peace with sparta and must give us compensation dikaiopolis now my masters put the question of the spartans out of sight and just listen to my treaties judge if i was wrong or right chorus how can you persist in saying you were right when you allege you made peace with men who honour neither altar oath nor pledge dikaiopolis well i'm sure those spartans even we so furiously hate aren't to blame for all the evils that have fallen on the state chorus not for all you wretch you rascal do you dare to tell us so freely flatly to our faces and then think we'll let you go dikaiopolis not to blame for all our troubles nay i'd show you if i might they have been in many cases actually in the right chorus you provoke my soul to frenzy you're a traitor to the state if you dare to plead before us for the enemies we hate dikaiopolis but if i should plead unfairly if the people scout my plea while i speak i'll lay my head down on a chopping block d'ye see chorus oh why spare your stones my deemsmen why not pound the loathsome pest why not card and comb the fellow to a right rich purple vest dikaiopolis how the black coal in your spirit leapt to fiery life again but my dear acarnians won't you won't you really hear me then chorus no we won't we'll never hear you dikaiopolis awful then will be my lot chorus i'll be hanged if i will hear you dikaiopolis dear acarnians i hope not chorus you shall die upon the spot 
dikaiopolis then by jove i'll make you smart i'll revenge myself by slaying what is dearest to your heart for i have a hostage from you who shall live or die with me chorus tell me tell me fellow demesman what this threat of his can be can he have a young acarnian baby held in durance vile or does his presumption spring from any other act of guile dikaiopolis stone me if you like but i will kill this darling of your soul quickly learning who amongst you feels the native love for coal as he pronounces the last word dikaiopolis produces a coal scuttle dressed in long clothes to represent a baby and prepares to pierce it with his sword chorus in great agitation we are done for do not kill him our own demesman oh forbear oh that scuttle do not harm him spare him we beseech thee spare dikaiopolis ball away for i shall slay him i'll not hear you on my soul chorus oh mine own familiar comrade oh my noble heart of coal dikaiopolis but just now you would not hear me speak a word about the peace chorus speak it now and praise the spartans to the top of your caprice for i never will prove traitor to my little scuttle here dikaiopolis first of all then throw your stones down and i'll spare the little deer chorus see we've thrown them all away now put up your sword i pray dikaiopolis but take care you try no hoax hide no pebbles in your cloaks chorus see they're shaken on the ground shaken by our dancing round now don't prate another word but make haste and sheath the sword the chorus dance round and shake out the stones from their cloaks while dikaiopolis puts away the sword and the coal scuttle dikaiopolis so then you could at last shake out your breath parnesian charcoal nearly died the death through its own deems unnatural misdoing it was so frightened that it fell to spewing a lot of coal dust like a cuttlefish tis monstrous sad men bear such acidish and sour grape natures that they pelt and laugh to utter scorn your decent half and half and even when i'm offering to lay my head upon a block and say my say and yet i love my life as well as they first semi-chorus why then don't you bring the block out from within and begin i am mightily desirous to know what you have to say speak away second semi-chorus yes since the penalties of your own seeking bring here the chopping block and try your speaking dikaiopolis fetches a chopping block dikaiopolis see here's the block and here's the little weak unhappy mortal who was going to speak jove i shan't take a buckler never fear it but say just what i think of spartan merit and yet i'm very much afraid i'm versed in the humours of these rustics always thirsting to hear some quack with fulsome adulation bespattering themselves in all the nation what matter whether lies or truth be told they never know how they are being sold and then i know your old man how he gloats or nothing like condemnatory votes and i remembered how i fared one day at cleon's hands for last year's comic play how to the senate house he pulled and dragged me and battered me with calumnies and nagged me and spattered me with muddy jokes and sallies while on my head he rinsed his dirty malice and swore such waterspouts i nearly died draggled and drowned in that polluting tide so now before i speak let me assume some tragical and beggarly costume chorus why these twists and shifts i pray why this craving for delay get hieronymus to lend you one of hades cask to wear with its murkily shaggly clustering hair i don't care or sisyphus tricks you may try if you choose but this trial will not admit any excuse dikaiopolis tis time for me to take good heart of grace for i must look euripides in the face he knocks at the door of a house at the back of the stage porter end of part one recording by expatriate in bangor maine part two of the acarnians by aristophanes translated by charles james bilson eighteen fifty eight to nineteen thirty two this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part 2. Porter opening the door. 
Who's there? Dicaeopolis. Euripides indoors? Porter, after a moment's reflection. Indoors and out of doors, if sense is yours. Dicaeopolis. Well, how can he be in yet out, you dunce? Porter, with the alacrity of a sophist, scenting a metaphysical argument. I'll prove you, master, that he's both at once. Abroad his intellectual being soars, collecting verselets, and is out of doors. His vital presence and material man sits in the garret, making verses scan. Dicaeopolis. Euripides is lucky, I declare, to have a porter who can split a hair. Call him. Porter. But that can't be. Dicaeopolis. But else you'll rue it, for I shall stay here knocking till you do it. Euripides, my Euripideon, hear me if ever you heard any one. It's Dicaeopolis from Kaladai. Euripides, within. But I'm engaged. Dicaeopolis, but let them wheel you free. Euripides, but that can't be. Dicaeopolis, but if you don't, you'll rue it. Euripides, but being too busy to come down, I'll do it. Euripides is wheeled out in the enclima. Dicaeopolis. I say, Euripides. Euripides. Well, what do you say? Dicaeopolis. Why, so you make your plays up there all day instead of the ground floor. Well, that should teach us why all of them go lame before they reach us. Verses and characters alike. And pray, why wear those tatters from some tragic play, those weeds of woe? Well, that should teach us why they're both alike so very beggarly. But, dear Euripides, I beg and pray, give me a little rag from that old play, for I must make a long speech to the chorus, and if we fail, our life must answer for us. Euripides, what tatters would you? Those my Aeneas there, the old man dismal fated, used to wear? Dicaeopolis, not Aeneas, no, a wretcheder than Aeneas. Euripides, blind phoenix? Dicaeopolis, no, although his rags had seen use, but was there one e'en wretcheder than he? Euripides, what shreds of raiment would the fellow see? Do you mean the rags of beggar Philoctetes? Dicaeopolis, no, my man's beggary far more complete is. Euripides, would you the muddy vesture that went on the crippled limbs of that Bellerophon? Dicaeopolis, no, not Bellerophon, but just that stamp a lame, persistent, prating, prosing tramp. Euripides, I know him, Telephus. Dicaeopolis, I, Telephus, give me his swaddlings and be generous. Euripides to his slave, boy, bring him Telephus's tattered tags. You'll find them lying on Thyestes' rags just under Eno's. Slave, take them, they are here. Dicaeopolis, holding the garments up to the light, to show their looped and windowed raggedness. By Jove, they'll see through this disguise, I fear. But tis indeed most tragically designed. Euripides, as you have been so kind, pray give me all belonging to the suit, the Mesian bonnet for my head to boot, since I this day must play the beggar here, be what I am but someone else appear, while all the audience know that I am I. But each poor foolish chorus man stands by for me to flip my word craft at his nose. Euripides, I will. The webs of thought thou weavest close. Dicaeopolis, bless you. May Telephus be what I trow. Bravo! What word craft I'm being filled with now. But still, I want a little beggar's stick. Euripides, take it and leave the marble mansion quick. Dicaeopolis, O oh, soul! Thou art ousted from these halls of his, though still in want of many properties. So now thou must be firm and persevere and importune. Euripides, my dear, give me a tiny basket with a handle, one with a hole burnt through it by a candle. Euripides, what want, then, of this woven thing is thine? Dicaeopolis, why, none at all. I want it to be mine. Euripides, evacuate the palace and don't bother. Dicaeopolis, may heaven bless you as it blessed your mother. Euripides, now sir be gone. Dicaeopolis, but grant me one more whim, a little pitcher with a broken rim. Euripides, there, take it with my curse, plague of the palace. Dicaeopolis, by Jove, to his own plaguiness he's callous. 
but give me one thing more a little jug there is a good darling with a sponge for plug euripides fellow you'll rob me of my tragedy take it and go dicaeopolis i'm going yet dear me what shall i do i want just one thing more and then i'll go forever i implore euripides for very life i ask it give me some withered leaves to line the basket euripides there there you'll ruin me my plays are sped dicaeopolis no more i'm going for my hardy head is over great nor wrecks of royal loathing oh dear poor me i'm lost and brought to nothing i'm done for i forgot the cornerstone of all my fortunes euripideon sweetest and best of men i thee implore may i be hanged if i ask any more but this one single trifle and no other just one poor lettuce heirloom of thy mother euripides the man insults us close the barriers there euripides is wheeled in dicaeopolis poor soul without a lettuce thou must fare now do the dangers of the race dishearten a soul that's going to speak up for the spartan here is the scratch come forth my soul and tow it dost halt hast thou not drunk the piteous poet that's right and now go yonder poor my heart and lay your head down there to speak your part screw up your courage eyes upon the goal art ready go well done my noble soul first semi-chorus what shall you say what is your plan shameless insolent brazen man to pledge the state your neck as you have done defending a minority of one second semi-chorus he does not fear his task to-day since you have chosen it speak away dicaeopolis take it not ill spectators i beseech that though a beggar i shall make a speech before athenians upon state concerns in comic style e'en comedy discerns the claims of justice and what i shall say will be severe but just and yet to-day cleon will not accuse me with his jeer that i abuse the state with strangers here at this Linnaean feast we're quite alone the strangers haven't come yet there are none arrived with tribute and no troops as yet from the allies so now at least we're met all by ourselves clean husked athenians born for as to medics they're the chaff of the corn now i hate spartans very much indeed and wish the ocean god whose victims bleed on tenorim would make their houses fall shaken by earthquakes down upon them all for i've had vines cut down as well as others but since all present here are friends and brothers why blame the spartans for this inconvenience for there are men with us but not athenians i never said they were athenians mind not men at all but wretched ill-designed false counterfeits the current coin debased flash citizens dishonoured and disgraced who confiscated the megarians jerkins and if they cited garlic salt or gherkins leverets or sucking pigs they called them ware from megara and sold them then and there that was a custom native to the land twas graver matter when a drunken band of cotabus befuddled boys went over and stole a girl from her megarian lover then the megarians bursting with vexation steal from aspasia in retaliation two other doxies and the war that drenches all greece with blood was due to these three wenches for then the olympian pericles in ire full mind enlightened with vindictive fire and shook all hellas with his armed throngs and laid down laws that read like drinking songs that the megarians do no more remain on land or market-place or sea or plain than the megarians when famine stride came nearer begged the spartans to provide that the three women bills should be repealed but though they often begged we would not yield and thence arose the clatter of the shield you'll say twas wrong but what was right i pray come now suppose a spartan some fine day sailed to seraphus and gave information and sold a puppy dog to your vexation would you have stayed at home no that you'd not the truth is you'd have launched upon the spot three hundred galleys filled the town with bawling for ship owners and captains soldiers calling with pay being given measuring of rations 
figureheads gilded groaning trading stations with thongs and wineskins people buying firkins garlic heads olives nets of onions gherkins chaplets sprats bruises piping women's scars the dockyard had been full of flattening spars and banging nails and fitting oars for griping flutes playing boatswains whistling pipers piping that you'd have done deem we that telephus had not then reason hath departed us first semi-chorus how dare you beggar talk like this and task all informers to our face you errant rascal second semi-chorus nay by poseidon but the man speaks fair all that he says is true not false i swear first semi-chorus and if it is what right has he to speak it on his bold head my vengeance shall be wreaked the first semi-chorus advance in a threatening attitude towards dicaeopolis second semi-chorus interposing ho oh, there where are you running to stay stay if you touch him you'll get a throw i say a struggle takes place between the two divisions of the chorus in which the first semi-chorus the party hostile to dicaeopolis is worsted thereupon it implores the assistance of lamachus first semi-chorus sings lamachus appear appear let the lightning of thine eye strike the foeman's heart with fear fellow tribesmen hasten nigh bless us now with wished sigh mighty gorgon crested knight is there here a warrior form knight at arms or colonel any soldier skilled to storm town and tower impregnable let him come to aid with haste for i'm grappled round the waist lamachus strides upon the stage accoutred like a burlesque hero with rustling plumes and clanging armour lamachus whence came that martial summons from afar where must i aid where wake the din of war who roused the gorgon from her case of leather dicaeopolis feigning extreme terror sir lamachus what fettle and what a feather first semi-chorus o oh, lamachus hasn't this scurvy jack been slandering all our state this long time back lamachus how dares a mendicant like thee talk thus dicaeopolis gramercy pardon it sir lamachus if a beggar like me did prate and prattle so lamachus what saidst thou of us speak dicaeopolis i don't yet know your terrible armour makes my head go round oh please please put that bugbear on the ground lamachus laying down his shield there then dicaeopolis now turn it upside down lamachus reversing the shield so that the gorgon head is undermost i've done it dicaeopolis now give me please the feather from your bonnet lamachus well there's the feather dicaeopolis hold my head a while i don't feel well those plumes have stirred my bile lamachus wretch wouldst thou use my feather for a vomit dicaeopolis what is the bird if that's a feather from it it's a white feathered boaster i suppose lamachus ha thou shalt die dicaeopolis no lamachus your blows don't reach the point between us here at all lamachus how beggar speaks thou thus to a general dicaeopolis am i a beggar lamachus why what are you then dicaeopolis what am i why i'm a good citizen and not a toadying place hunter's son but since the war began the son of a gun and not the son of a pay captain like you lamachus i was elected dicaeopolis by an owl or two well i made peace for i was sick and ill to see grey-headed veterans serving still and boys like you all shuffling off to race some with three drachmas salary to thrace your tisamenophenipian brothers and vagabond hipparchides and others ceres and theodorus to caonians or caries with our attico bezonians others to camarina and to sicily ay and to any other place that is silly lamachus they were elected dicaeopolis ay but what's the reason you're always going in and out of season and getting salaries and none of these pointing to the acarnians say did you ever go merilides on an embassy although you're old enough see there he shakes his head yet he's your stuff a steady working man and what of these dracolus prinides euphorides 
has any one of you been all the way to see the great king or caonia they answer no tis only lamachus and kisira's baby who have prospered thus men who were only yesterday so drowned in debts and taxes that their friends would sound the alarm keep off whene'er they came in sight like people pouring out the slops at night lamachus o sovereign people must i bear this say dicaeopolis no not when lamachus refuses pay lamachus then will i wage most furious bloody strife on sea and land throughout my mortal life against all spartans and their base allies with puissant arm i'll strike and scourge mine enemies exit lamachus dicaeopolis and i make proclamation unto sparta and her allies that all with me may barter megarians and boeotians may thus come to my market but not lamachus exit dicaeopolis the parabasis one commation he's winning the day and the people incline to the truce in their conscience his plea sticks but we'll doff our long flowing robes and combine to chant out the loud anapestics two anapest from the time when his first comic chorus was given our master he never has come on the stage to assure us that he is remarkably clever but his enemies charged him of late in athens of speedy decision of libelling people in state with an insolent scoffing derision and so he now wants to reply to athens of fickle decision declaring his merits are high and deserving of your recognition twas he who prevented the state from being fooled by each foreign oration from swallowing flattery's bait with an open mouth kit's delectation ere that all the envoys who came from the cities would try to get round you recalling your glorious name and the violet chaplets that crowned you when any one uttered the phrase you were all so rejoiced beyond measure at the crowns all united to praise that you sat upon tiptail for pleasure and if any one flattered your pride to the sleekness of athens referring he'd bring all the world to his side by a compliment fit for a herring in this way our master replies he has done you a service emphatic by showing how all the allies are conducting their rule democratic so now they will quickly arrive with the tribute they owe to the city all eager to see him alive the poet so brave and so witty the poet who risked his own life to athens her duty declaring yea now in far countries is rife the fame of his glorious daring the king himself lately demanded of some envoys from sparta discreet first which of the two states commanded the grecian seas with her fleet and secondly which was so often abused by this wonderful poet already their wicked hearts softened to virtue he said and i know it the side he so wisely advises will soon get the best of the blows and this is why sparta devises proposals of peace for her foes for she asked back aegina not caring a jot for the island that's clear but craftily bent upon tearing our bard from his natural sphere but never do you let him go for he'll play out his part with sincerity and promises ever to show the virtuous path to prosperity not fawning nor offering bribes not tricking nor playing the cheat not drenching with long diatribes but teaching what's honest and meet three macron pronounced by the actor in a breath and therefore let cleon exhibit his skill in plotting against me whatever he will confederate justice my bosom shall thrill and i'll never like him be convicted of ill who is false to the state and is false to it still four strophe come acarnian muse that burnest with the fire that feeds thy heart energetic strong and earnest is thy native simple art thy live vigour shall not dwindle as the spark's incessant leap which the helpful bellows kindle from the oak log's smouldering heap when the little fish are lying all upon the charcoal frying and while some are kneading bread others mix the thasian pickle pickle richly filleted so i pray thee be not fickle bring a song lively nervous bold and strong rough with rustic hardihood come to me thy deemsman good Five epirema we the aged we the hoary blame the thing our state has done that our old age is not cherished for the sea fights that we won hard ungrateful is your conduct dragging men with age oppressed to be laughed at in the law courts by the striplings ready jest 
ancient men mere living shadows deaf to sound with pipe played out whose poseidon and preserver is the staff they bear about mumbling drivelling with dotage there we stand within our place seeing nothing but the darkness of the labyrinthian case then the youngster very jealous to conduct his accusation smartly cudgels us with phrases clenched into a neat oration then he drags us up to question setting all his word traps baited hounding pounding and confounding poor tithonous evil fated toothless with old age he mutters and at last he goes away and the verdict is against him his accuser wins the day then he sobs and tells his comrades with a bitter tearful whine all the money for my coffin must be paid to meet the fine six antistrophe shame upon your evil doing ye who bring up every day to the water clock and ruin some poor fellow old and grey some old mate who shared your labour wiping off the manly sweat from his brow your constant neighbour in the battle's dust and heat one with whom you fought and won on the field of marathon we were making charges then on the foe that backward hurried now by shameless countrymen we ourselves are charged and worried till at last we're defeated too and cast who this scandal will deny even marpsius dare not try seven antiparema should a bent and hoary greybeard like thucydides be sued vexed by this abomination of a scythian solitude ruined by this prating pleader this cephisodemus here ah my heart was full with pity and i brushed aside a tear when i saw a scythian archer a long-winded advocate sore perplexing and confounding that old servant of the state who by ceres in the old time when he was thucydides from that dame herself would never have endured such wrongs as these rather would he first have gripped and flung you athlucies by dozens then bawled down ten thousand archers and outshot his father's cousins but since now you will not suffer aged men to sleep in peace vote that suit should be divided that this great injustice cease let the toothless charge the toothless let the old accuse the old let the young have smart accusers ready-tongued and quick and bold so in future you must never fine or banish those who are flung save when old men sue the old men and when young men sue the young enter dikaiopolis dikaiopolis these are the bounds then of my place of barter which i throw open to allies of sparta megarians and boeotians may thus come to my market but not lamachus the market stewards i elect together by lot to be these three good straps of leather and hither let no base informer come nor any other man from sneaking home now i'll set up the pillar with a treaty and make it visible to all the city exit dikaiopolis enter a megarian with two young daughters megarian hail mart o athens to megarians dear i've yearned for you by friendship's lord so sore as ye'd have been my mother hoot together ye misleared bairns of an unlucky father get up and gin ye fin it pre the haggis just hark ye now wi all your empty baggage would ye be salt or would ye starve to death daughters we would be salt salt megarian and so i think but where'd ye find good faith a coof so fexel says to buy ye baith ye good for nothing hizzies eh, i've hit on a good megarian plan i's gar ye pit on these clouts and say i bought two sows to niffer pit on the pig graith now and dinna differ for a bra old grumphy's bairns are on my elf i's take ye home at once to starve to death and put thy snouts here now upon your grunzies and go into the sack at once ye dunces and mind ye grump and say coy coy and squeal like whinge and mystery pigs and unco deal now i's could dikaiopolis to choose Uli, my man and would you buy some sows enter dikaiopolis dikaiopolis what's this a man from megara we're come to market man dikaiopolis and how'd you do at home megarian we sit all day in the chimla lug and fast dikaiopolis ah that's delightful if the liquor last and if a piper's there that's very pleasant how else do you megarians fare at present megarian just so-so 
when i started to come hither the council was consultin all together what was the best and quickest way to die dicaeopolis then you will soon be freed from misery megarian well well dicaeopolis what else how is corn sellin there megarian it's like the gods with us it's unco dear dicaeopolis then have you salt megarian haven't you the salt works too dicaeopolis or garlic feint height garlic have we now when ye invade our country like field mice ye howk up all the heads on it in a trice dicaeopolis what have you then megarian two sous for the mysteries dicaeopolis good let me see them megarian they're good sows are these lift up this one and feel her if ye choose how much she weighs they're both mace birdly sows dicaeopolis feeling the sack what's this thing megarian it's a sow mon dicaeopolis of what breed megarian megarian is not that a sow indeed dicaeopolis doesn't look like one to me it's true megarian mere shame to ye look at his suspecting new he says this is no pig of ah i is wad you some thyme it sout new and ye wis my laddie that it's a proper pig by the law of greece dicaeopolis well it's a proper pig of the human race megarian troth mon it's mine was did you think it was have ye a min to hear him squeal dicaeopolis oh yes megarian be quick now sow at once and make a squeal you mauna hold your whist ye ne'er do well or on my elf i'll take your home again daughter coy coy megarian is that a pig dicaeopolis now it's a pig that's plain but it will be a woman when it's prime megarian it will be like its mother in five years time dicaeopolis but it won't do for sacrifice megarian why no why won't it do dicaeopolis it has no tail to show megarian well it's a young one when it's been wheel fed twill have a good long tail a fat and red but an you rear it here's a bonny sow dicaeopolis it's very like the other one it's true megarian the free of mother and i father both tis a good venus offering in faith dicaeopolis and can they feed without their mother now megarian and without their father ye may vow dicaeopolis what do they eat most megarian i'll you let em try just spirit them yourself dicaeopolis pigs daughters coy 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 dicaeopolis would you like peas to eat daughters coy 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 dicaeopolis what and dried figs from fibulus daughters coy coy dicaeopolis oh what a squeal they give when i say figs let someone bring out figs for the little pigs now will they eat them heracles look there they munch them quite like human beings i swear whate'er the breed they're very gorgeous pigs and yet they cannot have gorged all the figs megarian nah nah i just took this in for myself dicaeopolis they're most humane young porkers i can tell what do you want now for your pigs my man megarian let's have a bunch of garlic for this one and take for tither and a quart of salt dicaeopolis stay here i'll buy them exit dicaeopolis megarian hermes of the mart just let me go and sell my wife now this very gate and my old mother too enter an informer informer fellow who are you megarian i'm a megarian trout a pig merchant informer then i'll denounce you both as enemies your little pigs and you megarian the cause of all our scathes returning now informer i'll teach you sir to megarize like this put down the sack megarian ho dicaeopolis someone's denouncing me enter dicaeopolis dicaeopolis who's that denouncing come market stewards you were meant for trouncing informers he belabors the informer with his leather straps who gave you your education you dunce pray how can you give information informer shan't i denounce our enemies dicaeopolis you'll rue it unless you run off somewhere else to do it megarian troth what a plague at athens this mon be dicaeopolis 
cheer up megarian here's the price you see the salt and garlic for the pigs i get take it and fare you well megarian i'll know to that we fare no well in my country dicaeopolis then may it recoil on me if i was wrong to say it megarian my little sows try now without your daddy to eat your bonnet salted and they're ready exeunt omnes End of part two. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part three of the Acarnians by Aristophanes. Translated by Charles James Bilson, 1858 to 1932. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part 3. Chorus. The fellow hit a lucky chance. See how his plan's progressing. He'll reap a glorious crop of wealth and fame and every blessing. Yes, in the marketplace he'll stay, and if a Catesia steps that way or any other spy comes prowling, he'll sit down howling. And no one else in purchasing provisions shall bamboozle you cleonymus shan't jostle you nor filthy prepice tousle you a cloak you'll wear of virgin white no sycophant has brought to light nor shall hyperbolus provoke you with suits to choke you nor shall cretinus hop to you his morning jest to bandy smooth shaven with a single shear like any gay young dandy that busy trifler with the muse that knave in artimonian shoes from whose rank armpits you may gather what goats his father pause and no more will be scoffin nor lysistratus importunate that shame of the colargians that double died unfortunate who begs and shivers every day and every month is starved they say for all the thirty days and dirtied for more than thirty enter a boeotian and boy followed by many pipers playing boeotian begora it's right shoulder galled i was put down the penny royal is menius nately now nately and those pipers round you that followed us from thebes enter dicaeopolis dicaeopolis stop stop confound you you buzzing wasp be off go to perdition was charis then your bumble pipe musician exeunt pipers boeotian now fax your honour i'm obliged to ye it's all the way from thebes they followed me puffin and blowin all my blossoms down now if you please buy what i brought to town i've got young chicks and every four-winged creature dicaeopolis well met my little pumpernickel eater how do you do my tight little boeotian what do you have brought us with all this commotion boeotian the very best entirely you could find in old boeotia meats of every kind wicks pennyroyal woodcocks jackdaws ducks divers and water hens and hazel chucks dicaeopolis you're like a winter gale man bringing fowls to market in such flights boeotian vex and i've owls beavers geese hares moles foxes cats hedgehogs otters and weasels eels from copes bogs dicaeopolis oh food to mortal man the best and fairest let me address the eels if such thou bearest boeotian first-born of fifty virgins copeids turn out to please his honour when he bids dicaeopolis o oh, maiden of my love o oh, pine for long thou art welcome to the lords of comic song beloved of Moricus, be quick ye fellows bring me out here the gridiron then the bellows behold her swains the loveliest eel and best after six years she seeks the yearning breast speak to her children i'll supply the charcoal all for the potence of her sweet eyes sparkle now bring her in o oh, may not death's oppressing rob me of thee well stewed with beetroot dressing boeotian but how will i be paid for it your honour dicaeopolis oh as a market toll will look upon her but will you sell me something else as well eh what do you say boeotian there's nothing i won't sell dicaeopolis come now how much do you want for all the pack or will you take another cargo back boeotian just what you got here and we go without dicaeopolis ah then you'll buy Falarian sprats, no doubt, or crockery. Boeotian. What? Is it sprats or crockery? We've got them both at home. Nay, no such mockery. I'll take what's common here and what we want. Dicaeopolis. I have it. 
bring him out a sycophant and pack him up like crockery ware boeotian that's it by all the saints it's a good sum i'd get showin him as a tricksy queer baboon dicaeopolis here comes nicarchus who'll denounce you soon boeotian it's small he is dicaeopolis but every inch is bad enter nicarchus an informer nicarchus whose wares are these boeotian sure in their mind bedad from thebes nicarchus then i denounce them every one as goods of the enemy boeotian what have they done the tiny birds to make you storm and clatter nicarchus and i'll denounce you too boeotian why what's the matter nicarchus i'll tell you that the audience may know you've got a wick from the enemy in tow dicaeopolis and so you're bringing now a wick to light nicarchus yes it might burn the dockyard down it might dicaeopolis a wick a dockyard nicarchus yes dicaeopolis but in what manner nicarchus it might be stuck by some boeotian planner looking hard at the boeotian upon a kind of beetle set alight and sent into the dockyard some dark night in a high wind up through a water drain and then the fire would catch the ships it's plain and they'd all blaze at once dicaeopolis belaboring him they'd blaze at once all through a beetle and a wick you dunce nicarchus i call you all to witness dicaeopolis gag him gag him give me some straw to stuff him in and bag him like crockery that he mayn't break as we drag him chorus now pack his purchase up my man as tight and firmly as you can safe to make it lest on the way he break it dicaeopolis i'll see to that he rings just like beating him a fire-cracked vessel when you strike jarring direly an utter scamp entirely chorus but what use will he be to him dicaeopolis a jar to suit his every whim a bowl of abuses a mortar of actions a lamp to throw light on official transactions a poisonous cup made to stir up plots and seditions and troublesome factions chorus how could you trust a jar like this that always gives so false a token dicaeopolis its strength my friend is not amiss hold a head down it can't be broken chorus to boeotian now you're well off my hearty boeotian i'll join a reaping party chorus ay reap em down my jolly clown and use em well in field and town for all you want the perfect sycophant dicaeopolis to audience i had hard work to pack that scoundrel there to boeotian here my boeotian take your crockery ware boeotian to boy come get your shoulder under him gossoon dicaeopolis be very careful how you hold the loon he's a very rotten burden anyway but still be careful if you get good pay and make some money by your importation you'll get some good out of an information exit boeotian and boy enter lamachus's slave slave ho oh, dicaeopolis dicaeopolis well why do you shout slave why lamachus desires you'll send him out some thrushes for this drachma here d'ye see and a copaic eel for the other three dicaeopolis an eel for lamachus what lamachus slave the dauntless one the bull-hide valorous who wields the gorgon shield and waves above three overshadowing plumes dicaeopolis nay then by jove if he'd give me a shield he shouldn't have the dish let him wag his plumes over some salted fish if he makes any outcry or resistance i'll call the market stewards to my assistance exit slave now for my part i shall take up this load and go back singing to my own abode sings quails and blackbirds fluttering spread purple pinions o'er my head exit dicaeopolis chorus strophe thou hast seen him o my city thou hast seen the master mind so far-sighted wise and witty he alone a truce has signed he alone at peace with sparta fearlessly can buy and barter merchandise of every kind every blessing every grace flows upon his favoured race all the thrifty wife would choose for her daily household use every dainty steaming dish that the starving soul could wish never more will i admit war beside my hearth to sit never at my board shall he troll harmodius's glee drunken fiend whose revel riot burst upon our happy quiet 
spoiling ruining destroying blessings we were all enjoying frenzied insolent marauder none could win him back to order though one spoke him soft and fair prithee take a seat good sir taste this loving cup my friend drink and let all quarrels end still his wrath but raged the higher till he set our poles on fire till at last a blacker treason seized him and he drew our wine stored and bottled for the season from its skins upon the vine antistrophe he departing in his glory goes the banquet to prepare proudly see he cast before ye tokens of his festal fare see displayed before his dwelling all those feathers surely telling of the princely dainties there come thou nymph of joke and mean playmate of the cyprian queen lovely peace whom none can ever from the laughing graces sever wherefore didst thou hide from sight thy celestial visage bright would some cupid sly would tether you and me dear love together all with twisted braids of roses and a hundred different posies like that winged boy divine limbed in aphrodite's shrine though perchance thou deemest me all too old a groom for thee three things i will do beside when i bring thee home a bride first i shall draw out in order rows of vines and round the border set some fig trees tender shoots and the slips of wild wood roots then i'll plant in ordered rows olives round our orchard close this i think to do though laden with a weight of years that we may anoint us both dear maiden when the new-faced moon we see enter dicaeopolis herald slaves etc herald hear all ye people as our sires ordained at trumpet call the gallon shall be drained the man who drains his gallon first to own the drinking prize the skin of ctesiphon dicaeopolis lads women don't ye hear what are ye doing didn't ye hear the herald to your stewing roast turn weave chaplets and take off that hair bring me the spits to spit those thrushes there chorus i envy your design so wise still more the feast you're making dicaeopolis and what then when you cast your eyes upon these thrushes baking chorus there too you're right completely dicaeopolis come give the fire a poking chorus you see how very neatly how dinner-like and featly he manages his cooking enter a countryman countryman oh dear oh dear dicaeopolis good lord who's that just come countryman a miserable man dicaeopolis then go back home countryman kind sir there's no one has a piece but you measure me out at least a five-year brew dicaeopolis what's come to you countryman i've lost my beasts and all dicaeopolis how countryman the boeotians stole them from their stall at phyle dicaeopolis that's a blow that must have smarted but why aren't you in black for the departed countryman ay though they always kept me well i vow in good manure dicaeopolis well what do you want now countryman i wept my eyes out for them beasts of mine oh if your kind heart does at all incline to durkates of phyle then i pray anoint my eyes with peace without delay dicaeopolis i'm not the parish doctor my poor chap countryman come come i pray you do for then mayhap i shall get back my oxen dicaeopolis oh dear no go and lament to pitiless and co countryman only a drop of peace just squeeze me one into this little tube dicaeopolis i'll give you none not a bird's whistle off now with your tears countryman oh dear oh dear my poor dear farming steers exit countryman chorus our friend seems to find the peace to his mind and to share it with any he seems disinclined dicaeopolis pour honey there over the tripe in that dish and mind how you're frying those fine cuttlefish chorus do you hear what a bellow dicaeopolis the eels broil them there chorus stop stop my dear fellow you'll kill us i swear i've hunger i'm dying and the folk who live near with the smell of good cheer and the noise of your crying enter a bridesman and bridesmaid dicaeopolis now then roast this and brown it well with care bridesman ho oh, dicaeopolis dicaeopolis who's there who's there bridesman 
A bridegroom sends you from the wedding feast this dish of meat. Dicaeopolis. That's very kind, at least, whoever he is. Bridesman. And he desires you, too, to pour out, in return for this same stew, one cup of peace into this alabaster, to keep him safe from service and disaster. Dicaeopolis. There, take your meat away. Don't give me any. I wouldn't do it for a pretty penny. But who's this girl? Turning to the bridesmaid. Bridesman. The bridesmaid. She comes here sent by the bride to gain your private ear. Dicaeopolis to bridesmaid. Come then, my dear, what is it? The bridesmaid whispers to him. Well, I'm blessed. What a ridiculous, absurd request. She wants to keep her husband safe at home. Well, bring the truces. I must give her some, since she's a woman and unfit for war. So, girl, just reach me here that ointment jar, and tell the bride when e'er they raise recruits to drop some grease into her husband's boots. Exit bridesman and bridesmaid. Take back the truces, bring that filter of mine, that I may fill the gallons up with wine. Chorus. Lo, here comes one with lifted brows and pale, speeding like one that bears a woeful tale. Enter a messenger. Messenger. O oh, general grief and grievous generals. Enter Lamachus. Lamachus. What voice re-echoes round the brass-girt halls? Messenger. The generals bid you hasten in full feather to guard the passes in this snowy weather. They've heard that the Boeotians will attack us while we are busy with the feast of Bacchus. Lamachus. O oh, generals, were your wisdom as your numbers? Isn't it hard to rob me of my slumbers like this and drag me from the feast Linnaean? Dicaeopolis. Ho! Armament duello Lamachaean. Lamarcus. Oh, dear. And now thou art mocking me with jests. Dicaeopolis. Wouldst thou strive with Gurion's four crests? Lamachus. Out, out, alas! Ah, what a message did the herald bear me? Dicaeopolis. Ha! With what message does this herald near me? Enter messenger. Messenger. Oh, Dicaeopolis. Dicaeopolis. Well, well, what is it? Messenger. The priest of Dionysus hopes you'll visit the feast at once, with box and gallon too. Quick, raise the dust. The dinner's stayed for you this long time. All the things are ready. Benches, footstools and tables, cushions, chaplets, wenches, dried fruits and comfits, honey cakes and myrrh, sesame puddings, broad cakes, all are there. Be quick, make haste. Exit messenger. Lamachus. Oh dear, my evil fate. Dicaeopolis. Why, yes, you trust to the protectorate of a big gorgon. Shut the door, you sinner, and let somebody be preparing dinner. Lamachus. Ho, oh, boy, there, bring me out my haversack. Dicaeopolis. Ho, oh, boy, there, bring me out my box to pack. Lamachus. Some salted thyme and onions, boy, be quick. Dicaeopolis. Some fish for me, boy, onions make me sick. Lamachus. Boy, bring me out a mess of rotten fish. Dicaeopolis. And me a mess, too, for a savory dish. Lamachus. Bring me the feather which my helmet brushes. Dicaeopolis. Bring me the pigeons and the little thrushes. Lamachus. How fair and white is this tall ostrich crest? Dicaeopolis. How fair and brown is this roast pigeon's breast? Lamachus. Sirrah, forbear to mock my martial arms. Dicaeopolis. Sirrah, forbear to eye my thrush's charms. Lamachus. Bring out the hair trunk where my crest reposes. Dicaeopolis. Bring out the hair stew that delights our noses. Lamachus. This moth was eating up my tufts so shining. Dicaeopolis, this mouth is eating hair soup before dining. Lamachus, don't worry me, sir, with your conversation. Dicaeopolis, no, but this boy and I have a disputation. To boy, now, will you bet? Let the decision rest with Lamachus. If locusts be the best, or thrushes. Lamachus, bah, you're insolent. Dicaeopolis, you hear it. He said that locusts had the greater merit. Lamachus, Ho, oh, boy, take down and bring me out my spear. Dicaeopolis. Ho, oh, boy, take off the tripe and bring it here. Lamachus. Come, I will draw my lance from forth its cover. To boy, stand fast and pull. Dicaeopolis. And you, boy, pull this over. Lamachus. Bring me the stand that holds my staff of strife. Dicaeopolis. Bring me the bread out, lad, my staff of life. 
Lamachus, bring me the oval gorgon compass shield. Dicaeopolis, and me the pancakes cheese and compass field. Lamachus, this insolence is broad. I'll none of it. Dicaeopolis, this broad cake's good. I'll have another bit. Lamachus, boy, pour the oil out. In this bronze I see an old man being tried for treachery. Dicaeopolis, pour out the honey. Here's an old man's face who curses Lamachus's gorgon race. Lamachus, bring me my breastplate, boy, my aid in war. Dicaeopolis, bring me my breastplate, boy, my gallon jar. Lamachus, herewith I'll arm myself the foe to rout. Dicaeopolis, herewith I'll arm me for a drinking bout. Lamachus, boy, strap my bedding to the shield this minute. Dicaeopolis, boy, strap the meat box with my dinner in it. Lamachus, give me the knapsack on my back, I'll bear it. Dicaeopolis, give me the cloak, upon my way I'll wear it. Lamachus, take up the shield, boy, and we'll quit this folly. It's snowing, ugh, things look most melancholy. Exit. Dicaeopolis, take up the dinner, things look very jolly. Exit. Chorus, see the twain to battle sped, but what diverse ways they tread. One will sit and feast all night with a wreath of roses dight, drinking hard, while the other sits and shivers with a thousand quakes and quivers, keeping guard. Strophe. May that scion of slobber, that quill-driving jobber, Antimachus scribbler of verse, without reservation or equivocation, be damned with the thunderer's curse. For when President Orus, as head of the chorus, on Bacchus's festival day, the miserly beast shut me out from the feast and sent me quite famished away. May I see him half dying for cuttlefish frying, when bubbling and hissing and nice, with salt ready stored it hangs over the board and lands on his plate in a trice. Then just ere he slips the first slice in his lips, may a little dog steal through the door, make a snatch at the dish, run away with the fish, and never be found any more. Antistrophe. One plague we have reckoned, and now may a second befall him as well in the night. Going home from a ride with a pain in his side and a feverish pitiful plight, ere he reaches abode may some knight of the road of wassail and insolence full orestes pursued by the furies intrude upon him and batter his skull in a terrible taking while cup purse is breaking his head may he look all around and grope in the dark very wide of the mark to pick up a stone from the ground and finding at last a missile to cast no matter what not what he seeks take aim as he can and missing his man bespatter cratinus's cheeks enter a messenger messenger ye slaves that dwell in lamachus mansion water heat water in a little pension make ready linen greased wool and plaster to bandage up the ankle of your master the man was wounded leaping o'er a trench upon a treacherous stake the backward wrench unhinged his ankle and with awful shock he burst his head flat fallen upon a rock started the gorgon from her case of leather and down the cliff was hurled the boaster's feather loud rang the death cry of the hapless wight farewell great orb i leave thy glorious light to see it never more i die a martyr so spake and straightway fell into the water rose up and found some base deserters near and routed all the robbers with his spear but throw the doors apart for he is here enter lamachus wounded supported by two slaves lamachus woe woe unutterable woe oh icy pang oh dear alack i go to realms below from wound of foeman's spear but twere indeed a grievous shock if dicaeopolis should see me wounded here and mock such woeful fate as this enter dicaeopolis drunk supported by two dancing girls dicaeopolis ho ho unutterable bliss my golden chicks i thirst for one soft kiss what joy is this i've drunk the gallon first lamachus o oh, wretched state o oh, woeful fate alack 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 my horrid wounds would shock ye dicaeopolis lo lamachus come back how do my little jockey lamachus foul hate is mine dicaeopolis i've no repose lamachus don't kiss me swine dicaeopolis don't bite my nose lamachus 
Oh dear, what damages! That charge was heavy. Dicaeopolis, what charge today could anybody levy? Lamachus, Apollo, healer, unto thee I call. Dicaeopolis, it isn't now the healer's festival. Lamachus, convey me instant on a healing mission to Pitalus, the eminent physician. Dicaeopolis, and bear me away to the judges, I pray. Is the king within? Then give me the skin. Lamachus, a cruel spear has pierced my bones in horrid, gruesome fray. Dicaeopolis, there, look at that, I've emptied it, hurrah, I've won the day. Chorus, sing ho, sing ho, the conqueror, you bid us all sing hello. Dicaeopolis, yes, and I filled one full of wine and drank it at a swallow. Chorus, bravo, hurrah, my noble heart, the skin is yours, hooray. Dicaeopolis, then follow me and sing hurrah, bravo, he's won the day. Chorus, We'll fill your train as you go in and cheer again, you and your skin, with a hearty strain. He's won the day with a hip, 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 hooray. End of part three. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. End of the Acarnians by Aristophanes. Translated by Charles James Bilson. 1858 to 1932.